Hey guys, so I'm doing a scheduled pop end on my YZ250 here. It's got about just a little over 80 hours on the on the bike, and this is this will be the third piston it's seen. I uh, thought it'd be a good time to do a bit of an oil review for you uh, while we have things apart, and I haven't cleaned anything yet. I've been running this Klotar 50 probably for the last 60 or so hours of the bike's life. Uh, prior to that, I've been I was burning. I think it was just the the Yamaha Lube or Yamaha 2R. Switched to this Klotz. Because, uh, well, I don't know, a few reasons. <laughs> Not that anything was wrong with the Yamaha 2R, but I do pretty much most of my riding in uh, at a sand track. And, um, and it's deep sand. So as I've gotten better on the bike and uh, a lot more comfortable with it, I'm getting quite a bit harder on it. And especially in the sand where the things under load all the time, running hot, I kind of was looking for an oil that had a higher flash point. But I didn't really want to be burning uh, the the bean all or uh, like a, a Maxima 927 a castor oil. So I found this as an alternative. This is a fully synthetic oil. It's not like their Technoplate where it's, I think that one's like a 80-20% uh, mix ratio between synthetic and castor oil. This is straight synthetic. synthetic. If you look at the spec sheets, the flash point on this is, is kind of similar levels. Maybe not quite as high as a castor oil, but uh, but it's up there. A lot higher than than uh, normal oils so I'm not a rocket scientist or anything but I figured I would kind of prefer a higher flash point because I know the engines working very hard in the sand most of the time and the longer that oil can stay kind of in suspension and, and lubricating the things it needs to the better the trade-off to that is obviously gumminess and dirtiness I've never really had an issue with uh, the bike being dirty or spooging. I mix, I used to mix 40 to 1 back in the day when I was, uh, I don't know, just putting around really. <laughs> but now I, I brought it back down to 32 to 1 because I've gotten quite a bit better on the bike. So I figure she needs more oil. So the last 60 or so hours, again, has been about 32 to 1. Never had any issues with uh, kind of spooging. I've never had any physical drips come out of my uh, silencer. I just repacked it recently and there's there was no like raw oil in the can or anything. The bike is getting hot enough obviously to, to get rid of it. I have only fouled one plug with this, this oil and that was just from myself putting around too long around my house here, uh, kind of in the trails, just not getting it hot enough obviously. I was just lugging it around and it's kind of, kind of cruising really. So I've only fouled the one plug. When my seals on my pipe have gone, I've changed them a few times, but uh, I've noticed some dripping coming from the power valve there. Uh, so I'm going to clean that all out here now and show you this is this is how I found it. And I had this pretty clean about 30 hours ago when I did the last pop end. But you can see there's a little puddle oil down there. Everything's nice and saturated. Here's the exhaust port. As you can see it's kind of, I could probably scrape off a layer of that crap that's in there. Yep, there we go, put the light inside. It's a little dirty, nothing too terribly bad. I think most of that will, will come off in a parts washer. Power valve isn't terribly gummy. I, it, <laughs> I say that, but it is kind of sticking a little bit on me right now. Uh, I just noticed when I was just actuating it by hand. So I'll clean everything up and I imagine that'll, that'll fix that issue. Here's the piston. Again, this has pretty much exactly 30 hours on it. I did wipe this off with a, a rag. It just, this kind of carbon just wiped off. But as you can see, it looks pretty good. You can even see part number still. I run Vertex cast pistons. I'm not one of the uh, forged guys. I mean, I've, I've ran them before in bikes, but nothing wrong with the forged piston. Uh, but I, I don't know, I just like to keep on top of my, my maintenance. And uh, cast is, the way I look at it, the, this, the piston is cheap compared to a cylinder, right? So when I measure these out, I haven't done it yet, but usually when I measure these out after running casts, I mean, they, they, this is much softer than that. I don't want to wear out the cylinder. I'll happily change these out at 30 hour intervals. No problem, they're not expensive. But when you get a cylinder worn out and from a, a harder material, then that's where it could get expensive. Yeah, you can run the piston longer when it's forged, but uh, I don't know. To each their own, really. There's no right or wrong answer, I just, prefer to, to run cast. Should also mention and show you the, the dome too, the cylinder head. 
jetting wise, I believe I'm fatter on the uh, the main. I forget the number off the top of my head. Sorry, uh, I'm I think two jets fatter on the main and one fatter on the pilot. I have a V Force three reed block on this bike and a full uh, FMF exhaust system. And uh, this is this is how we're looking here. To me, is is just perfect. It's kind of like a a brown on there, a blackish brown. Yeah, that's how she looks. Coming over to the crankshaft, I already gave everything a feel, and it feels beautiful. The there's kind of like a, as you can see, a yellow yellowish film on uh, most of the surfaces in here, and that's that's kind of the color of the oil. It comes out of the bottle red, but it's it's like a yellowish red. That stuff is so slimy snot, like it sticks to everything. Does that beautifully here. Um, I didn't have any residual stuff on the bottom. I know there's debates about whether you're supposed to or, or not have residual oil on the bottom. Uh, that could be a few factors. I did just run this bike before I took it apart, so about an hour ago it ran. So maybe gravity hasn't had time to, to move everything down there just yet, but there is a, if it would focus and... Okay, well, take my word for it because you can't see no light in there. But there is a, a film down there, a residual film, which is good. The crank weights are coated. Uh, you can kind of see just random puddles of the stuff around. So it appears to be getting where it needs to. Crank feels great. Not sure what else to say. So there's just kind of a quick overview of Klotz R50. I know this is a very touchy subject, especially on forums. Holy hell, people just have such strong opinions and... <laughs> and get very vocal about what oil is better than the other. I'm just laying out what I've found when running this stuff. This is what I choose to run. I'm not saying there's not better oils out there. I'm not saying this is the best. I'm strictly pointing out what I've experienced so far with this R50 because good God, people get pretty, pretty irate over uh, oil choices. And there are so many damn variables of <laughs> that like every, everything, everybody's different. Every bike is different. It can come down to, well, it comes down to rider skill, how hard they are on their motorcycle. Budget, obviously, is another big one, right? Like, racing's expensive, riding's expensive, so how much do they maintain it? How much don't they maintain it? What kind of climate are they riding in? How well jetted is the bike to begin with? What kind of conditions does the, like, what sort of tracks do they ride? All these things play a factor in kind of making the ideal oil choice. Anyway, there's no right or wrong answer, I would say. Just need to pick an oil based on a few factors so that, that suits you best. I would say I would not recommend this oil if you are like a single track rider or you, uh, you know, do a lot of like to say woods riding or just even if you kind of like ride at a, a relaxed pace sort of thing. Like the problem with the high flash point on this, uh, if you, you need to get the bike hot in order to get rid of a lot of it, right? So it will make a mess on you if you just kind of lug your bike around and uh, don't you know get, stay on the pipe for a long wouldn't necessarily recommend it for that and i know i know you can jet to you can jet it properly and you know get your mix ratio just right to kind of alleviate some of those issues but uh i just straight up wouldn't recommend like that's just a pain in the ass i'd recommend another something else if you're a single track rider because this is this is a high performance racing oil that requires you know high, high engine temperatures to to get rid of it properly for a 252 stroke and I'm not a pro rider by any means, so I don't need a full-blown castor oil, but this would be a good number two to castor oil uh, as far as protection-wise. They have similar flash points, so uh, just castor oil would burn a little dirtier than this because uh, this, this is still, again, the full synthetic. If I had a 125, I'd probably be running castor oil. That's a little more common in higher revving engines and poor little 125s that just get flogged all day. The thing's under a lot more stress than, than my 250 here. So the 250cc... Motocrossers, uh, give R50 a try if you're racing it or if uh, you know you're you're working the thing. Yeah, it's a little ex more expensive than some of your other stuff. I, I know that, especially up here in Canada, there's kind of limited places to get this. I don't know. I wanted to give it an honest shakedown. I absolutely love the smell. It's half the reason I bought it, which is very simple of me. And <laughs> but I'm not an oil Nazi. I'm just telling you how it is. So. Any questions, let me know, and uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys later.